Welcome to the Lifestyle Overland Channel. When we last left you, I had struck out on a solo trek into the Utah and Nevada desert with our Forerunner and Voyager trailer. After exploring a surreal steaming volcano and camping near some old mines with a magnificent view of the desert valley, I pushed further south into Nevada to meet up with my friend Keith. While Keith is no stranger to the channel, this time he's brought along his new Tundra project instead of the usual Forerunner and Turtleback combo you've seen before. I'm really stoked to see his new project in action and give you some sneak peeks into his setup during our trip as he shakes down some of his freshly installed systems. Now, let's pick up where we left off. Waking up from a restful night surrounded by a spectacular cathedral of colorful sandstone. After a quick breakfast of frosted wheat and topo brew coffee, we took some time to explore the surrounding oddities on foot. With nearly two weeks of explorations ahead of us, we were in no hurry to make miles for the sake of making miles, which has definitely been our modus operandi for the past several years. But this season, I'm really interested in slowing the pace and letting my curiosity lead me down some proverbial bunny trails to really immerse myself in the landscape instead of watching it fly past in the rearview mirror. Wow, there's there's tracks in here. Something's been coming oh, really? in here and like, like hanging out. Its own little home. Maybe a bobcat. This would be a pretty big. What? Crazy. Pretty cool how fast it is. <laughs> That's too, wild. You know? Scrambling over these hills and through these washes, it never ceases to amaze me what could be on the other side of the hill or behind that next bend. And today, our efforts on foot were being rewarded with some impressive petroglyphs and stunning sandstone formations. There's just some things you can't see from the seat of a rig. I'm also trying to focus more on my physical and mental health by being more active on foot and more present in the moment instead of trying to check off that next section of trail. Honestly, I didn't have any big expectations for this trip. I just wanted to branch out and explore some new areas of the Southwest. But if our first taste of this region is any indication as to what it has in store, then we were about to be blown away. Oh, and spoiler alert, you'll want to stay tuned for what's next. Apparently this was some sort of sandstone mining operation, I guess for decorative purposes. I've never seen one for sandstone. Maybe that's why it didn't last very long. We are on the trail. Simple little breakfast this morning and some coffee. Played in the rocks a bit. Checking out some of these wild sandstone formations. 
and now we're out to see what else we can get into. This has been an incredible spot. Keith is the master when it comes to sniffing out epic spots. There's one thing you got to know when you're running with Keith, that is skinny pedal, skinny pedal, skinny pedal. <laughs> Definitely putting the trailer suspension to the test today. What's a little bit interesting or scary is that this 4Runner rides so good. It just floats across. I'm, I'm going over nasty stuff right now and it's just like so. You have to remember there's a trailer back there, but I have to say, I'm watching this thing and it's just, where are we going? Where are we going, Silver? Where are we going, Silver? I'm pretty impressed. After stumbling across one of the most incredible sandstone formations I'd ever seen, we decided it would be the perfect place for a quick lunch while we took a closer look. Now when traveling with friends, it's inevitable that inside jokes will eventually develop over the miles and through the shared challenges. Seeing Keith with his massive sandwich reminded me of one of my favorite moments from the archives. What you got for lunch? Turkey ham sandwich on homemade jalapeno cheddar dip. Cheddar dough. <laughs> Sourdough. Sourdough. Yeah, that sounds good. It's delicious. And no Charlie around the scarf. That's right, yeah. I've got the sandwich all to myself. <laughs> Cue the flashback. And when I say whipping uh -oh. us up some sandwiches, I mean myself well, and Charlie, the Labradoodle pup. Hey! <laughs> you! I told you. <laughs> it was delicious, wasn't it, boy? <laughs> I don't have to share. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was too early in the day to stop for camp, but 
but I definitely put this site down for future reference and snapped a couple photos for the wall collection before packing down the Bush Company awning. By the way, this 270 Max has pretty much changed my mind on standalone style awnings, and now I won't hesitate to deploy it for a quick stop, even in a stiff breeze. I'm not worried about a guess the wind taking it down. Right. Oh, and if it's not obvious by now, this trailer has quickly spoiled me too with its speedy setup and pack down. I've been doing my best not to come across like a total fanboy, but sometimes you just gotta give credit where credit's due. Anyhow, back to the trail. A few miles down the road, we finally spotted our first wild Mustang who, honestly, wasn't too wild at all. After his impromptu photo shoot, he demonstrated how stud, or male horses, will poo in an existing pile to mark their territory and to let rival studs know that, um, he means business. You know how some trails are just brutal? This has been one of them. Just, just a grind. Thankfully, it's been worth it. There's been some spots in here that are just fantastic. Right now, we're making our way back to pavement. Gonna hop on for about seven or eight miles and then reset into another area of BLM wilderness. And continue exploring, but uh, this is awesome. I wasn't expecting this. I, I did not have high expectations for this area, but it has exceeded them big time. This might be uh, working its way up the favorite list just a little bit. No sooner than we hit dirt again, our route became questionable with a big sign warning us of imminent danger due to a live target range. Now clearly, this was not an official notification, so we took a few minutes to scratch our heads. Yeah, I think, because they got a berm right there. Yeah. So, so I think it's because it goes that way. You can see, like, it looks like maybe a long range target right over there. I don't know. The, the tracks that I have go down this road. It's definitely not a government sign. No. After a bit of deliberation, we decided to ease into the area and soon found that the sign was indeed for the old trail and we would not need to worry about dodging live fire. It didn't take long though before the trail narrowed it made for some interesting maneuvers to wind the forerunner and trailer combo down something that's probably more suited for side-by-sides and ATVs. But I was yet again impressed with how well the new trailer was doing in spite of the washouts and off-camera sections. My only regret was not taking more time to film the obstacles, but night was coming on fast and we still had a ways to go to make camp.
we get around this next turn. I'm not filming a third of it. Not a quarter of it. This trail is awesome. Finally, we hit a wider wash and were able to pick up speed and soon pulled into what appeared to be another magnificent camp. While Keith scouted out a couple more options of the area, I happened to catch some movement on the horizon and spotted a mother desert bighorn sheep with a couple of lambs playing around overhead. As I've mentioned a few times, this season we're answering popular questions and sharing more of the nitty gritty parts of camp life. So this time around, let's cover showers. While there are several permanently mounted privacy tent options out there that set up in just a few seconds, for colder weather, we prefer this pop-up tent by Rest Stop purely because it's a small and closed space, which makes for a hot, steamy shower experience without losing all the heat out of the open top styles. This is a huge advantage for cold weather showers, but without going into too much detail, be forewarned that this strategy can backfire when using it for um, other purposes. All right, well, if you can't tell, it's that time. I think I'm going on about four days right now. And uh, yeah, especially with this warm weather, it is time. So I'll see you in a minute, feeling a little bit fresher. Much, much better. After a refreshing hot shower, it was time to whip up a meal I'd been looking forward to for a few days now, Camp Smash Burgers. This will be my first time trying these at camp, but for starters, we'll throw a little seasoning into the mix. I like to use pink Himalayan salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and some smoked paprika. Then you mix it all up, roll it into balls, and get ready to smash. You'll want a super hot griddle so the outside quickly sears and locks in the juices. I was a bit impatient tonight and didn't get it as hot as I like, but when you're hungry and trying to film, things can get overlooked. I also brought along the wrong spatula since the lip of the skillet interfered with the smashing, but a few attempts and blisters later, I got an acceptable result. Now what makes smash burgers better than regular patties? 
Well, the internet has plenty of its own opinions, but personally, I like them because you can usually get a nice crispy crust on the outside, and they cook up really fast as compared to a thicker patty. I also find them far juicier, but you'll just have to try them for yourself to see. I'm well aware that smash burger culture has some strong opinions about how to do things properly, so feel free to comment below on your favorite methods, and I'll give them a try next time around. Let's see. That'll work. Mm. After a delicious hard earned burger, it was time for another chore we haven't talked about much, but get a lot of questions on, and that is doing dishes. When in the wilderness, especially in the desert, water is a precious commodity. So I like to start with about a quart of extra soapy, extra hot water in a basin and begin with the cleanest, least greasy dishes first. This keeps the water cleaner longer and the grease from spreading to the other collection of dishes. I also like a good bristle brush since the desert air quickly dries food particles and it can get tough to scrub off after sitting for a few minutes. Once scrubbed clean, I carefully rinse the soap off using the tiniest flow of water so that it gradually fills the sink for the larger, more messy dishes without depleting the water supply too much. All the dishes get stacked wet elsewhere so I can use the water while it's as hot as possible. Finally, we try to carry a couple of good drying towels and alternate every day so one is always mostly dry. After wiping any food bits into the sink, I drain it all into a collapsible basin, which I can carry away from camp and far enough away from any streams to prevent contamination. This is also handy in bear country because it keeps your food smells at a minimum by tossing it far from your camping area. Now maybe all this seems like common sense to you, but we've had a ton of questions about this over the years and wanted to cover a process that is really different in the wilderness than it is compared to home where you have limitless water supply. All right, well, that's a wrap for today. Excellent, delicious smash burgers for dinner. Had a little Kit Fox stroll right into camp, hung out for a minute, and barely caught his tail end as he was making his way back out of camp. So that was pretty special. And this is a fantastic campsite. So I can't wait to get up and check it out in the morning. We've also got some bighorn sheep that are hanging out right above camp. So I've got my long range camera ready first thing in the morning to see if we can't catch some more of those guys but just beautiful silhouettes up there as we were setting up camp it's it's a fantastic day lots of challenging trails trailer continues to just blow my mind so impressive so impressive awesome day all right let's get some sleep do it all again tomorrow thanks for riding along on this leg of the journey Hope you'll join me again next time for more incredible Nevada explorations. But before you go, I'd like to ask for your help in keeping our public lands accessible by heading to sharetrails.org and taking a look at some of the outstanding issues attempting to close down historical routes through this land that we love. You can also find ways to help improve our lands by joining treadlightly.org and signing up for upcoming projects in your area to play a role in the stewardship process that also helps ensure sustainability for generations to come. Until next time, stay curious and remember to leave it better than you found it.